Welcome back, everyone. The key to a happier life doesn't lie in acquiring things or constantly being busy. Rather, the key to a bliss-filled life often lies in ditching negative habits, attitudes, and beliefs that can stand in the way of experiencing expansive joy. And today we're talking with our very own joy refueler, Don Kaiser, here to share with us five habits that we need to cast aside to live fuller, more joy-filled lives. Thank you so much for joining us again today. Hey, Lisa, how are you? You actually just bring great energy oh. into the uh, studio, so it's always Thank great to you. have you here. So you have a, kind of a list. So yes easy ways to, to kind of refuel. Yeah, people think joy is a complicated thing, but it's really simple, right? And the very first habit that we need to ditch is actually complaining. We have a culture of constant yes. complaining. I mean, you think about, you run into people and how often, especially up here in Minnesota, North Dakota, do we complain about the weather yep. right away or complain about construction season? Yes. And so really challenging yourself, how can we ditch and, and create a complaint-free zone, both at home and even at work, right? For one day, challenge yourself to go complaint-free and just see how prevalent complaining is in our society. And instead of going, because sometimes people go, well, if I can't complain, what can I talk about, <laughs> right? Right. You talk about all the good things. Name three good things that are happening in your life right now before you go into, here's all the issues that I want to vent about as well. It just, you have to make a conscious effort because there are great things. I could give you a list of 30, but you're right. I'd probably right. say, oh, you start with the negative. So yeah. stop that. So stop that. Second one is we need to limit the amount of negative people that we hang okay. out with, right? Which is why we got rid of Jordan. No, I'm right. <laughs> but looking at who do you spend the most time with, right? So I'm not just talking about that random person that you walk down the street and they're negative. But who do you surround yourself with? And are they fueling you up or are they draining you? Can you talk to those negative people about that before you cut them out? Oh, I would absolutely, definitely, right? Give them a little bit of a heads up, even coaching. Sometimes they don't realize, going back right. to complaining, they don't realize that they're complaining or gossiping. So, And if somebody's depressed or grieving, right, it's not like, oh, I'm not going to talk to you. It's really about asking, do I like who I become when I'm around you, right? right? And if I don't like who I become, then I need to change a little bit of that as well. Do it for yourself. Yeah. Cut them out. Okay, number three on the list. Oh, definitely the the hardest one, I think, for people to give up, and that's the busyness badge, right? Letting go of thinking I have to constantly be busy all the time. I feel like we're on this treadmill of life, and people are just really spinning their wheels and not getting anywhere, and busyness actually doesn't lead to joy, right? So we need to learn to be still, and I encourage people to use what I call sacred pauses, and those are those times in our lives when it's automatically that we have to sit and be still, whether that's at a traffic light, whether that's we're waiting for to pick up our kiddos from school or we're waiting in line at the grocery store. Using those moments to just take a breath, breathe in joy, and breathe out stress, right? And just doing that three different times. I'm not good with that. I have a bit of FOMO. Uh-oh. Fear of missing out, so I'm like, yeah. go, go, go. But... But that's where your, your, those pauses are sacred, right? Yes. You're already having to wait at a stoplight. You're already having to wait in line. So it's using the moments that are already being given to you and you're not missing out because you're already having to just sit there. It's just a choice of, am I going to sit there and be negative or sit there and refuel myself as well, right? I love it. Okay. Number four on the list. Oh, this number is four. One. It is. It is getting rid of that self-criticism, right? You think about how often our self-talk actually drains our joy. And so I've really got, you know, two key questions that I ask myself. Number one, would I actually tell my best friend that statement? I would never go up to you, Lisa, and say, oh my gosh, Lisa, you are so stupid. I can't believe you're ever going to do that, right? But yet we say that to ourselves. And question number two is somebody who I really admire, would they ever view it that way? Would they, you know, the mentor who I look up to, the person who I admire, the leader who I admire, would they actually go, oh, that's, that's impossible. You don't have the talent. You, you can't do this, right? If they wouldn't say that to me, why would I say that to myself? Why is it so hard to cut ourselves a break though? I think it's because we hold ourselves higher, right? Like we have this perfection expectation and it's really to go, I'm perfectly imperfect. Yeah. And that's actually where joy can be found is in the imperfections of life. I love it. All right. Four easy steps, but it's a conscious effort. Though. Yes, absolutely. Daily. How can people get a hold of you if they want more help? You can just find me on my website at www.donkaiser.com or email me at info at donkaiser.com as well. I'd love to help you ditch those habits. Yeah, good stuff. Thank you so Thanks. much. Coming up on today's show, is it true that saving money is the major reason for sale by owners try to sell their home? We'll find out next.